There's a bass coming up to sniff right there. Just slowly lifting the rod tip. And I'm just gonna kill it when he when he gets up to my level. And I stare at that tip. There he bit. There we go. It's a real finesse deal for these largemouth in the wintertime, but they actively feed throughout the winter months, especially northern strain largemouth bass. They spend half their year, five months anyways, under a sheet of ice and cold water. So they are accustomed to feeding throughout the winter months. You know, they have short feeding windows. Early and late ice is typically the best, but our approach is coming out here in late fall and where we find big schools of fish, open water, we come back and fish them early ice. And if you can land on a big school of bass, you can catch them pretty consistently, and it's a lot of fun. You look at that rod action right there, and, and rod is really critical to this whole system. And this is a 13 fishing tickle stick, and this extremely fast tip is essentially a spring bobber without needing a spring bobber. So I can minimize the amount of hardware on my ice fishing rod. I just got a rod, I got a reel, I got a built-in spring bobber, if you will, that meets up with the stiff midsection to drive hooks home. So I can handle little bluegill with a rod like this, crappie, perch, but I can also come out and fish walleye and bass in this condition. Little slab wrap bass. There we go. Not a huge fish, but pretty. When you're ice fishing, you'll take, you'll take any bass or bigger fish like a pike or a walleye. It's a nice change of pace from bluegill and crappie. When you catch one, there's usually more. Because if you actually drop an underwater camera down, and we like to hunt these spots, big weed flats where there's big, big extensions, uh, mid-depth weeds, rather than just steep drop-offs. But we run around with an AquaView Micro and we hunt the fish. Here we go, here's another one coming up to inspect me right now. So we find the fish with the underwater camera before we actually fish them. And what you'll see when you drop the camera down on a good bass school is 25, lost them, 25, 30, 40. You could have up, upwards of 100 fish in an area just roaming around. And you might go run holes in another section of the structure and not see a bass. So it's real important to find the fish first. And when you find them, be ready to drop down quick on them. And that's why we'd rather power fish them come in with a more aggressive approach that allows us to get down quickly to the level of the fish. And you can always downsize, but we'd rather come into a school of fish, start with a little bit larger bait that has some noise, has some profile, some vibration, and try to get the bigger fish of the school to come up and bite. And oftentimes what you're doing is actually, you're finding the active fish. So you can see my cadence now, I'm not marking any fish. So my goal is to make that bait really flash, make it wobble under the, under the ice. I can feel it right through my rod. And you know the fish can hear and feel it too. So and this is my calling cadence, if you will, to get fish into the hole. See how that bottom thickness changes? There's a fish coming off the bottom. That's the nice thing about an LCD screen too, is it really does reveal the presence of a fish. You can see a nice flat screen, and then all of a sudden that bottom's getting thicker and thicker. Sure enough, there's one right below me now. Now he's separating where you can see a little magenta below him. And bottom. Come on. Come on, you sucker. Now he's coming up. So I'm just going to keep jiggling this bait until that line connects with my bait, and then I'm just going to kill it. About right now, I'm just going to stop the bait and stare at the rod tip. Do that. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a finesse deal. There's no question about it. That feels like a nice fish. So I got six pound suffix micro ice on right now. And then I got a little bit monofilament leader to six pound test. A little inline barrel swivel and about a two foot section of six pound monofilament leader. And then a little snap to connect to the jig. Here's the deal with braid under the ice though, or, or fuse line, is if you're fishing a little bit deeper water, when you get that really subtle bite, there's no stretch in this material. So it moves that rod tip. If I have monofilament on with 20% stretch, I may not even get any movement on that rod tip. So that's why I like to fish, fish a super line under the ice. There he is. Look at, he's got some weed on him. 
Look at that pretty bass. That's a perfect presentation for a fish like this. It's the right size for, uh, for winter fish. There he goes. Woo!